Hello and welcome to this recording. In today's class, we will lay a very final step. We will lay a very final touch on the writing skills. The first thing, the first question to be asked is a linkage between the previous work and this work. And I would very much appreciate asking you questions so that I can give air to the class. I give ventilation to the class. The first question is, what is the word so that we can link the previous work with the present work? What is the word? Yes, please. Uh, the word is uh, the smallest building block of writing. That is marvelous. Fantastic. Uh, a word is a smallest, smallest building, building block, block of, of writing. 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 Like the sentence also. The sentence is the smallest building block of meaning. Building block of meaning. There is a difference, but the difference is not huge. And I would very much appreciate asking another question. What are the three, the four, sorry, the four levels of writing? Uh, one, uh, yes, word, a word, phrase, phrase, close, close, sentence. Wonderful. That is marvelous. Yes, please. And I would very much appreciate asking another question. What is a phrase? What is a phrase? Yes, please. Yes, phrase. please. A phrase forms a part of sentence. Marvelous. It yes. forms a part of oh, a sentence, yes. only a part. Yes. And there is a difference here between a phrase and a clause. What is the difference between a phrase and a clause? A phrase yes. forms, a forms a part, a part of, of a sentence. sentence. Yes where the clause has a full meaning. Yes, go ahead with the definition. Go ahead. Main clause mm. has a full meaning. Has full meaning. Marvelous. Yes. And uh, the subordinate, subordinate clause hasn't. The subordinate hasn't. hasn't. It, depends, it depends, on depends on the main clause. Wonderful. That's marvelous. Thank you very much. And I would very much appreciate asking the final question so that we can jump on to the topic. Uh, let us ask you, what are the three types of sentences? Yes, please. The three types of sentences are? Uh, the simple sentence. The simple sentence. The compound sentence. The compound sentence. The complex sentence. The complex sentence. Marvelous. That's wonderful. And I would very much appreciate asking another question. Huh? Can you answer me before I ask you? Because you know the question. The final question is about what? Uh, it, uh, it is a sentence. This means that you asked, you, you, you answered me before I asked you. You brought the cart before the horse. You brought the cart before the horse. My question is, there is a fine line between creativity and chaos. What kind of utterance is it? Is it a question? Is it a sentence? It is a sentence, marvelous. It is a sentence. Now, finished our revision, our preview. Let us go ahead with our dealing. Unit 3 deals with, you know, we've been talking about writing at a letter level, and we've been talking about writing at a word level, and we've been also talking about a sentence level. Now, we are going to have a sentence level once again. We are going to talk once again about the sentence level. And may in the long run, if nothing intervenes, we will also be uh, we going to ask about a paragraph level. So let us have the following. L let's have a look at the contents, please. The contents are very important. We are going to talk about a sentence level. So we define the sentence. A sentence is a group of words having a full meaning. This means that the reader understands you when you have this utterance. So let us have a look here, the contents. Let's have a look at the preview also here. We will discuss the following, the concept of a complete sentence. The concept of a complete sentence. And then also we will be looking at the different patterns. Patterns mean structures of a sentence. And also, let us have another look at the following. 
the functions of a sentence, the sentence complexity, the sentence complexity, the sentence complexity, we will also be looking there will be examples, exercises, and SAQs. SAQs means self-assessment questions, self-assessment questions. However, it is to be remembered that the activity, the activities in this unit are not enough to provide thorough practice. Thorough practice means complete practice. So let us go ahead with the rest of the definition. You know, the sentence is very important if you want to communicate. If you want to speak, a sentence is very important. If you want to communicate, you communicate using words. And when you use words, you link them with sentences. And if you want to communicate in a better way, you should have a great vocabulary of meaning. You should have a great vocabulary of meaning. So let us have another look here. The Oxford, is, if we ask about a sentence, the Oxford Advanced Learner's Dictionary, this is the best dictionary ever. The best dictionary ever defines the sentence as a set of words expressing a statement, a question, or an order. Order means command. You ask you to do something, usually containing a subject and a verb. Let us have another look. In written English, it is different from spoken English. In written English, sentences begin with a capital letter. You know this fact very well. And end with a full stop. Full stop means period. And a question mark or an exclamation mark. It means also it is called exclamation point. So this definition tells three things about the sentence. Let's have a look at them. This is very important. From the point of view of function, function means job. From the point of view of function, a sentence expresses a statement or expresses a question or expresses an order, means command. Let us define that one by one. A sentence expresses a statement means giving information, giving information or opinion, what you think about a sentence. Then it might form a question. A question means asking for information. And also it might be an order. Order means telling someone to do something, telling someone to do something. So let us go ahead. From the point of view of the mechanism of writing, as a sentence begins with a capital letter and ends with a, bunk, a punctuation mark. We've been talking about punctuation last semester. So, according to the function of the sentence, a full stop or a question mark or an exclamation mark, we will be happy to look at the following. The function of sentences, you can say a function, a sentence can, can do one of the following functions. Number one, the function, it can provide, the sentence can provide information or state an opinion. This is number one. It can provide information. It can ask someone to do something. And it can ask for information. It can also tell someone to do something. That's an order. That's a command. You ask, you ask through the sentence, you ask someone to do something. And it can express, this is the final point, it can express a strong emotion. For example, if you are happy, your wording, your communication is different from when you are sad. When you are sad, your communication is also different. So there is, there is something important here. Accordingly, a sentence can be one of the four types. It can be a statement, means sentence. It can be a question. It can be a command, means order. It can be an exclamation. An exclamation means a strong feeling, a strong emotion, you know? Look at the following examples. The first example will illustrate something important. There are 44 phonemes. You know phonemes? Phonemes mean sounds. Phonemes mean sounds. There are 40, there are 44 phonemes in English language. 
Some people say that, some students say that, we have only 28 letters. How come, and how come we have 44 phonemes? Yes, because there are consonant sounds, and there are consonant sounds, and they are silent sounds in the language. So the language is sounds, by the way. The language is not letters. The language is sounds. For example, you have 44 phonemes, you have 44 sounds. We have 20 as vowel sounds. The, the, there is no utterance as vowel letters. We hear that, this is a wrong notion. We hear that there are, there are uh, five letters, five sounds in English. That is wrong, by the way. We have only five letters, but in the form of sounds. Then we have 20 vowels and we have 24 consonants. The consonant is different from a vowel. We will be looking at that later on. There are 44 phonemes in English language. The consonant sounds are 24. You see? We have 24 consonant sounds. Then the vowel sounds are 12. The vowel sounds are 12. Last of which is W, a consonant or a vowel? This is a question. It sometimes, it is sometimes a vowel and it is sometimes a consonant. When it is a consonant, for example, the word wrong. W-R-O-N-G. It is a consonant sound here. It is consonant. Wrong. But if I say word, it is not consonant. It is vowel. Word means you have to pronounce it. So let us have how many short vowels are there in English. As we said, we have eight short vowels. We will be looking at them. We will be looking at them one by one. What does this symbol mean? What does it stand for? Stand for, you tell me, and then put your tongue between your teeth, for example. If you want to put your tongue between your teeth, this means that you are going to utter some of the letters. Some of the words are pronounced with your teeth between your, between, uh, with your tongue between your teeth. So, touch your throat. If you touch your throat, you put your hand here. This is how to touch your throat and raise your voice. So you are not going to do this here because you might shout and we might not be able to tolerate your shouting. So, so you are not going to do the, the last one here. Raise your voice. You raise your voice means you speak in shouting. You speak out. You speak up. So let us have, this is perfect. When you say this is perfect, this is and emotion, this is a strong emotion. This is a strong emotion. So let us have the following. Sentence A, uh, sentence A to three are statements. Statements means sentences. And let us go ahead. Sentence four to six are questions. You follow that from the textbook. That's on the textbook. You follow it from your textbook. Sentence seven to nine are commands asking you to do something also on the textbook. And the last one, sentences 10 to 11 are exclamations, asking for surprise, asking for sadness, for happiness, for a strong emotion. Answer the following question. Write a full definition of a sentence. Listen here. It is very important to follow me. A sentence is an independent set of words that, express, that expresses the full idea and can be a sentence, as can be a statement, which gives information or opinion, or a question which asks for information. This is a full definition. You don't have to have this full definition. You can only ask, you can only answer by saying, a sentence is a group of words having a full meaning, conveying a full idea. You see? This is enough. And if we go a little bit 
fails a, a command which tells someone to do something or an exclamation which expresses a strong feeling. You see, a sentence must have a subject. This is a very important point here. A sentence has to have a subject. For example, we follow SVO. You know SVO, dear students? SVO means subject, verb, object. Subject, verb, object. If you have a sentence, it has to have a subject. Is, it, is, it must have an object and it must have a verb. This is a full sentence. But if it does not have a verb, that might be a phrase. You know, that's a phrase once again. So a sentence must have a subject, the topic of the sentence. And a, a predicate. A predicate means answering the subject. Answering what does the subject do. What the sentence says about the subject. It can be made up of one main clause or one main clause and subordinate clauses. We said that a subordinate clause doesn't have a meaning of its own. But a main clause has. A main clause has as the question have been asked. The questions have been asked before. So let us go ahead with our dealing. What do you call a sentence that ends with a full stop? This is a very main question. What do you call? This, is, this question is for you. What do we call a sentence that ends with a full stop? We call it a statement. We call it a statement. A statement. You are not going to get it from a bank. No. A statement is not that statement like the statement in the bank. No, bank statement. That's not. This is a statement. This is statement means sentence. You end it with a full stop. For example, there is a fine line between creativity and chaos. This is a sentence. You put a full stop. This is a sentence. So let us have a statement is also correct. What does it express? It expresses a full idea. It expresses a full idea. It gives information or opinion. And let us, what do you call a sentence that ends with a question mark? That goes without saying, goes without answering. It is a question. It is a question, marvelous. It is a question. And what do we call, what, what is its function? Its function is to ask about information, to ask about information. Ask for information. Ask for information. What do you call a sentence that ends with an exclamation mark? It is an exclamatory sentence. Exclamatory sentence asking for information. An exclamation, of course. You see? What is it, its function? Its function is to ask about something expresses a strong feeling. That feeling might be sadness, might be a strong emotion, might be happiness, might be disaster sometimes. So what does each of the following stand for? What does each of the following stand for? Let us have a look at S. S stands for sentence. S stands for sentence. The initials, these initial letters, S means sentence. V means verb. Verb. And LV means means huh? LV. If we have a verb here, what is LV? What is LV? So, what is DO? I'm asking you because I answered the first two ones. Sentence, S stands for sentence, V stands for verb, and LV stands for something verb. That's an L verb, DO stands for direct object, direct object. ID stands for indirect object, indirect object. For example, if you say he hit Himself, he cut his finger, sorry, he cut his finger in a bad way. He cut his finger, his finger is a direct object. 
in a bad way is an indirect object, you see? So let us have S SC, sentence, construction, and OC is also, these are the four levels of writing units here. They are, let us have a word, a phrase, a clause, and a sentence, you see? The followings are examples of complex sentences. If you think education is expensive, if you think education is expensive, try ignorance. You see? If you say, try ignorance, that is a subordinate clause. And it does not have any meaning of its own. But if you say, if you think education is expensive, this is the main clause. And try ignorance is a subordinate clause. They have to go together. Culture, which is crucial for language learning, must not be ignored in syllabus design. So this is a main clause and a subordinate clause. Let us have, although we now have a lot of vital data, we cannot exactly say what will happen in the future. In the near, no one can tell the future, can they? No one can tell the future. No one can tell the future. We believe in the unseen, yes, but we cannot tell the future. See, answer the following definition of a sentence. A sentence is an independent set. Independent does not depend on anything else. An independent set of words that expresses a full idea and can be a statement which gives information or opinion or asks for a question. So, in this here, we are going to answer the following definition of a sentence again. Or an exclamation. A sentence can be an exclamation. Let us go ahead because we have all that on our syllabus. Uh, we have laid a very strong basis on the writing skills. And we talked about the sentence. And with this, we conclude this recording, hoping to come again for the paragraph level. Ladies and gentlemen, I end up here, and I would like to see you again. Thank you very much, and thanks for the team working to reproduce these classes. Thanks a lot. Thank you.